How does the US Africa Command view the current threat landscape on the African continent? AFRICOM Commander General Walt Hauser revealed AFRICOM's posture in front of the Senate. The statement is on the website in full if, you're, if you want to read that. Interesting points. A secure, stable, and prosperous Africa is an enduring American interest. For scale, Africa is over three times larger than the U.S. The U.S. Africa Command area of responsibility encompasses 53 countries with a population of 1.3 billion. By 2050, this figure is forecasted to almost double to over 2.54 billion, with one out of every four people on the planet living on the African continent. 41% of Africans are under the age of 15, while 60% of the total population is under the age of 24. Our efforts to ensure strategic access must also be viewed through the lens of competitor influence and coercive activities which seek to gain advantages over the U.S. by moving faster in economic and security markets where we are constrained by our values and law. China is a strategic competitor which uses economic and security outreach to foster investment incentives, jobs and infrastructure growth in return for access to Africa's strategic locations, natural resources and markets. China has most successfully employed this model in Djibouti, holding 80% of the government of Djibouti's debt, where access through the Bab el Mandeb Strait, the Red Sea and the Suez Canal remains a US strategic imperative. Today, on the African side of the Red Sea and in the Bab el Mandeb Strait, which encompasses Somalia, Djibouti, Eritrea, Sudan, and Egypt, the great powers and the Gulf states both cooperate and compete for real estate and port facilities. So going back to comments from Jason Warren, uh, AFRICOM posture is framed by priorities of national defense strategy with resultant concern, great power competition, especially vis-a-vis -vis China and Russia, violent extremist organizations called VEOs um, are a key target, um, saying that the U.S. is shifting away from terrorism and towards great power competition means it's focusing on countering Chinese and Russia's presence. About China, Chinese threat to U.S. access to markets and ports, China's use of usurious debt trap diplomacy, attractive Chinese loans to strategic allies like Djibouti, Senegal and Angola, lack of African workers for Chinese funded projects. I go back to, I think it's 2012 when I said the US has a decisive hard power advantage over the African continent and that increasingly I see the US deploying its hard power advantage to tilt the pitch and staunch the Chinese advance. Um, and I was saying, this is in 2012 to CCTV, I said in some respects in that time Obama was president, pivot to Asia detours through Africa. China has made a parabolic advance across the continent and one of the desired side effects of staunching the Al-Qaeda advance is that it also counters the Chinese advance via the insertion of US hard power. Um, and I was talking about US Africa Command, and, uh, and uh, then I was quoting Zbigniew Brzezinski, um, who once said three grand imperatives of imperial geo strategy are to prevent collusion, maintain security dependence among the vassals, keep tributaries pliant and protected, and keep the barbarians from coming together. Then, in August last year, I was writing about the Indian Ocean economy in a port race, and I said today from Massawa, Eritrea admittedly on the Red Sea, to Djibouti, from Berbera to Mogadishu, from Lamu to Mombasa, to Tanga, to Bagamoyo, to Dar es Salaam, through Beira and Maputo, all the way to Durban, and all points in between, we're witnessing a port race of sorts as everyone seeks to get a piece of the Indian Ocean port action. 
China, the BRI initiative, the Gulf countries who now appear to see the Horn of Africa as their hinterland, Japan and India to a lesser degree are all jostling for optimal geo-economic positioning. As we scan the blue economy, it is worth appreciating that maritime shipping is the lifeblood of Africa with over 90% of the continent's imports and exports transported by sea. Andrew Coribico says the Indian Ocean region is expected to become the geostrategic center of gravity in the new Cold War. This is a photograph of the Indian Ocean from 420 South Diani Beach. This is a photo of an evening in Maputo. As I said, a sine qua non of Obama's pivot to Asia is US NATO power project projection over the Indian Ocean. 2013, I said, I have no doubt that the Indian Ocean is set to regain its glory days. I was quoting Felipe Fernandez Amesto, who says, the precocity of the Indian Ocean as a zone of long-range navigation and cultural exchange is one of the glaring facts of history made possible by the reversible escalator of the monsoon wind. And on that point, have a listen to my interview with Maria Joao Lopo de Cavallo about Luis de Camões and uh, her book, which followed his 16th century journey from Portugal around the Cape of Good Hope, Mozambique, Mombasa, Malindi, Oman, all the way to Macau. And on that note, this is a photograph of Ali the Navigator, who took us on the Indian Ocean to Wasini Island once. And another point which was brought up by AFRICOM was the, about the insurgency tail risk. And I said it remains and how it plays out will have important consequence for ourselves.